Well, good morning. Today, I introduce Wes Hafner. He works with Greene County Young Life and jumps into the lives of students to share Jesus and to let them know that they're loved. So turn your attention this morning to Wes. Hey everyone, uh, like they said, uh, I'm Wes Hefner. I work for Young Life in Lenore and Greene County, uh, and I'm the Young Life leader at Green Central High School in Snow Hill. Uh, and it's such an honor to get to speak with you uh, and just tell you uh, kind of just what's been on my heart a lot lately uh, during this time of quarantine. I'd love to start off to tell you uh, a story of um, kind of a time that I was leading a group of high school kids at a Young Life camp. Um, and this was a few years back, and it was at a camp called Carolina Point, and uh, it was night five or four. It was whatever night the crosstalk is, uh, and if, you don't, if you're not familiar with Young Life Camp, uh, you know, we have a talk progression where it's um, you know, intro, person of Christ, need, sin, cross, resurrection, appropriation, and this is uh, the night of the crosstalk. And so we're getting back to the cabin, and there are these... Uh, there are these 15, 16, 17-year-old high school guys just in this cabin, bawling their eyes out, uh, and, and I get to sit there and talk with them about, you know, why, are our good, why aren't our good deeds good enough? Uh, why did Christ have to die? Uh, what does it mean to have a real relationship with Christ? But I kind of notice, you know, well, I'm having a great conversation, but I kind of notice this one kid in the back not saying much. Uh, and you know, I kind of take a note of it. And you know, when he did say something, it, it was trying to manage, you know, trying to lighten the mood in the cabin. And so, Young Life does this really great thing called uh, the Salsa House, where uh, after cabin time, you can take one or two kids, you know, up to the dining hall and eat chips and salsa and have more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. <clears throat> and so, I try to sweeten it up a little bit. I pulled. My friend aside, and and I said, "Hey, man, you wanna you wanna sneak into the dining hall and and take some of tomorrow's lunch?" And he's like, "Heck yeah, let's do it!" Uh, and so we we sneak up there, and he sees right away that you know I'm full of it. There's people in there eating chips and talking like this is a thing that people do, uh, and, but it worked. You know, it was a win. I got him to come with me, and so we're eating. We're sitting there eating chips and salsa, and I just become really straight with them and I just say, hey man, um, you know, I, just with our cabin, our cabin time tonight and the ones before this, I can kind of gauge where everyone else is with where the speaker is and I'm just curious, kind of where are you with all of this? And, and you know, he looks kind of nervous and like he, like he doesn't want to disappoint me or something and then he says, you know, Wes, like don't be mad at me but... Um, I feel like this is all. This is for all of those guys. This isn't for me. Like, the things that I'm filling my life up with right now are working. And at this point in our relationship, I know all the things that he's doing, and he knows that I know that he does all those things. And, and you know, he's very open. He's, you know, the partying, the drinking, the hooking up with the girls. Like, I remember the speaker uh, talking about we try to fill our lives up with all this stuff that. We think it's gonna fulfill us, but doesn't. And I just feel like the things that I'm doing does. Um, and I just remember sitting there thinking, man, like my heart is breaking for this kid. How in the world do you think this is all life is cracked up to be? Getting drunk and going to parties and hooking up with girls. Um, and so, I, you know, I'm like, what do I say to him? I can't. I can't try to convince him that uh, you know to to believe in this stuff, to believe in Christ, and and give your life to Him. Like that wouldn't work. Um, and so what I said next, gosh, if his mom would have known what I said, she would hate me. But thankfully, he's graduated now, so we're good. Uh, but I just looked at him and said, you know, I don't agree with any of what any, anything what you're doing. Um, but you know, if what you say is true. Like if that's giving you life, if running after all these things is fulfilling you, then keep doing it. But when it stops, come talk to me. And he's kind of dumbfounded. He's like, "What? Uh, uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, great, thanks." And, and, and then you know we you know we get walk back down to the cabin, and we had a great week. You know, kids met the Lord. Wonderful. Uh, but a few months later, he gives me, I get a call from that same kid and, and, and he's got, you know, he's kind of you know, crying a little bit and he's like, man, dude, 
none of these things, like you're right, like none of the stuff that I that I'm running to that I'm that I'm filling my life with is is actually working. Like there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be more to life than this. And I'm on the other side of the phone call, like, heck yeah, like let's go, like like all right, man, let's 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 talk, let's meet up. And I'm just like, you know, grinning ear to ear to hear that. And um, I, I tell you the story. Because I think, you know, a lot of times, especially right now during quarantine, we're not so different than, um, than my high school friend. Um, I know right now, uh, you know, when, when I'm planning out my, my schedule, my, my week, that, you know, I look at it and, and I try to fill it with everything that I possibly can. When I wake up in the morning, you know, very seldom am I waking up saying, man, I can't wait to spend a day away with God, you know, I'm waking up thinking, what, what, what next, like, what's next on my schedule, what next can I do, like, what's the next thing that I have planned that I, I can hurry up and get to, um, and if we take this a step further, me working, you know, for Young Life, it's a relational, incarnational ministry, you know, we're meant to be face-to-face -face with people, in front of people, and quarantine has stopped that, uh, and that can lead uh, me especially to just doubting myself, doubting what I'm doing, doubting God, which can lead to a really slippery slope uh, that can um, kind of get you back into old habits or bad habits or, or causing you to doubt God and look for anything else that looks moderately attractive um, to run to and, and to, to fill yourself up with. Um, and I say this because... There's two verses that um, I, I usually talk about when I'm with high school kids. Uh, and one is John 10.10. I've come so you have life and life to the full. And Psalm 63.3, uh, his steadfast love is greater than life. And I love, love using these two verses because in the Bible Belt, you get a lot of kids that really, really think that they have a, a relationship with the Lord and, and just have no clue and so I like to ask them, you know, hey, do you think, you know, Jesus says this right here, do you think Christ has really come so you may have life and life to the full? And do you really believe that uh, God's steadfast love is greater than life? And more often than not, you know, the high school kid will say, well, well no, like I just thought it was going to church on Sunday and I, I didn't really think it was, it was anything. I know, I don't think... Jesus brings full life, or life abundantly. Uh, and, you know, I think with us, like, especially right now in quarantine, our hearts, uh, it's really easy that our, for our hearts to be mistaken and, and not think those things as well. Um, you know, I was reading a John Piper book, um, I forgot what it's called, a few months ago, and he says, he said this one line where it was, when, uh, when we're reading a miracle of Jesus and we are not completely blown away to the point of getting on our knees and thanking Jesus, that's not a scriptural problem. That's our heart problem. And I just remember reading that and thinking, holy cow, like there's so many times where I am reading scripture or listening to a podcast or listening to a sermon and I'm saying, like this is good, this is fine, but this isn't for me. This is for this is for this guy that's like struggling with that, or this is for you know this believer that you know doesn't really know this yet. And and then I get to thinking, man, I'm starting to sound more like my my high school friend. Where no, like Jesus and his ministry is for everyone, and it's for me, and it should blow me away. Um, and I say all this because right now during quarantine, I I, I can fully understand and I get that um, it becomes really hard to not want to jump to the next thing or, or jump to the jump to what we have planned on our schedule for the past two weeks that we just can't wait to come um, but but very seldom do I find myself waking up and just wanting to run to the Lord uh, and get blown away by scripture and get blown away and rest in his presence uh, more often than not, I, I want to wake up and do what I want to do uh, and what I think will give me life. And my biggest you know, application for all of you is just, how is your heart right now? Um, 
how are you doing during, during times of the quarantine? Are you waking up and ready to have a day away with God, or are you waking up and uh, just ready to get to the next thing? Because um, I know that's something that I've been struggling with lately, uh, and, and I just thought maybe some of you might be as well. And so I just want to say thank you so much for listening, um, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you.